disregard the Pentax 645 I have here. This is a work in progress, but I had a breakthrough on the... This is my Spotmatic. As you can see, it's very much bare bones at this moment. I basically took the top off, took the bottom off, took the front off, even took the mirror box out and really just got down to the root of the issue. And I know I've recorded many videos about this, and to be honest, I don't know how many of them I will be editing together. I think a lot of it, I'll probably just kind of cut together a quick montage of me working on it, because this has been kind of a, a back burner project for the last two or three months. A good, good amount of time, but I was also very unfamiliar with this camera system. I know that it, it's basically this is the predecessor to the K1000. Anyone who doesn't know, it uses a pretty universal M42 mount. Lots of cameras in like the early 60s and stuff use this kind of mount, so little lenses are pretty easy to come by. You can get like a pretty decent lens like this for really cheap. Just it's like a screw mount basically, and then there's just that that closes the blades. And then also, interestingly enough, they have something like this, which is a Pentax K mount converter to M42. So you could put this on like a actual K1000 or an ME Super or MG or whatever it is that you use, and you can just screw a lens like this onto it. But anyway, very interesting cameras because they were like the one of the earlier consumer cameras. They used a battery somewhat similar to this. It's a little like 1.3 volt like dish battery. But obviously in the time they used uh, mercury batteries instead. So we talked about that earlier, but if you didn't watch that video, I will link it in the description or put like a little thing annotation somewhere up here so you can check it out because mercury batteries are fairly interesting and also poison but not talking about that we're talking about these i don't like these batteries at all they're kind of expensive and the output is not great and like for instance i've had this one for like the two months i've been working on this and it's already like dropped significantly in power output. So I don't really trust those. So what I did was I outfit the bottom to fit the more reliable LR44 right there, as you can see. And all I simply did there was just kind of push out this little plastic dish that was designed for this battery to sit in. I just don't think that it was working too well. And also, due to something I'm going to discuss in a bit here, needed greater power output. So let's look at the front here again. If you look, there's this thing on the side. It's this little switch, and this is actually what engages the light meter system. So if you have this set off, then just it won't run. If you look here on the side of the mirror box, there's this little switch right there. So when you lift up on that, it's basically gonna push that forward and connect these two metal contacts right there. Now the power comes in through there, hits there, and then there's another power cable leading up to the little board right there. So basically, this gives you a preview of the depth of field. It'll close the aperture blades, so you can see kind of what, you'll, what the picture will kind of look like. And then also it engages the light meter. And then when you fire, the mirror will go up, and it will reset that whole system. So it only works from one exposure, then you just have to lift up the light meter switch again. So that's pretty interesting. And then there's the two CDS cells right there. And that's really what I want to talk about because that was probably one of the harder things to learn about because the information that's out there on these is kind of cryptic to say the least and especially when it comes to this unit in particular. So I guess let's just get into it. Uh, these are new cells that I put in there. Basically they 
they work as a form of resistor. And so I have another galvan meter right here. This was the original one. And basically what I did, the first thing I did to check this was I just hooked it up to a battery. And immediately the needle shot to the middle and it, it stayed there pretty consistently. Even if you kind of moved it, it would go back to the middle. When it has power, that's where it will go, to the middle. And so, based off of that evidence, oh, and also as you can see here, currently does not have power, so it's sitting just below the middle, and that's like 0.3 centimeters below the middle. On the Spotmatic uh, repair manual, it has like all of the specifics. I don't know them off the top of my head, so we're not going to get into it, but anyway. The resistors here, as well as the inputs from the shutter speed and the ASA, all file in to this little board here. Basically, you're getting resistance inputs that are counter affecting the power that's coming in. So you need to have a set level of power which is rated at, at minimally 1.3 volts which is why this losing power so frequently is kind of an issue because I think this is like 1.3 or 1.35 volts standard. So you need a little something higher if you're asking for my opinion just to kind of counteract that. So consistent level of power mixed with the resistance levels from the light that you're receiving. If you're receiving a lot of light, there will be a lot of resistance, which will push the needle up. If you're receiving very little light, then it's low resistance and that'll bring the needle down, I think. And then also there's the effects of this and there's a little contact sheet under here that basically inputs that. And it's all very like, analog so to speak like this is very rudimentary as you can see the board here is super simplistic as opposed to something that came out like 20 years later the emmy super board which is incredibly complex and i'm not even joking like this thing is ridiculous the other thing i wanted to point out was in looking through the manual it was saying that there's a memory block I was like, that makes no sense. Until I checked out these contacts right there. And what we have, two flash sync ports right there. So they reach down in there and whatever. But there's a little block under here that if you set the, um, you set the shutter speed to a certain shutter, then it will activate one of these things, and if there is a flash sync cable put into there, it will trigger the flash. So you get like a partial charge through here when firing. Kind of interesting, if you ask me. Um, but that's something that's kind of important. And I think that was it. I basically took this entire thing apart and have just been working on it gradually, so I'm going to probably be putting it back together but if you have ever messed with the Spotmatic if you've ever known anyone to have a Spotmatic and these are even the types of conversations you have with people these just never really work like they work mechanically perfectly like these are just these are basically the K1000 predecessor so mechanically it works beautifully and works really well the light metering system though never really works and I think I've got that figured out by all metrics that I can test it this thing works perfectly fine so I'm very pleased with that and I'm hoping that in the coming months and years and stuff I will be able to repair a lot more of these and really be able to maintain this because in all truth and honesty I'm like this thing's like a really dope little camera like I think this is one of the cameras that as film photography is becoming more accepted and more embraced by any kind of artistic community, they're always going to be looking for those kind of like fringe cameras, you know, things that aren't quite as popular but still work pretty well but are also a little cheaper. But you know, they might catch a cool glimpse like someone walking down the street and they're like, oh, what's that? Like every time I bring my Mamiya C330 out, every time someone comes up to me we have a little conversation which is great and i really i enjoy that because it's always kind of a unique conversation that you wouldn't have otherwise 
And it's the same kind of thing with this camera, you know. They're, they're plentiful. There are so many Spotmatics out there in the world, but there are so few of them that work. Like I think in the couple hundred that I've messed with, maybe two or three have had functioning light meters. That's not even accurate light meters, that's just the needle kind of moves. So there's obviously, there's a lot of variables that play into that. That's why I took this apart completely and was testing all possibilities. There were certain clues that kind of led me to think what the issue was with this one. And so through process of elimination and through just sheer determination, I was able to figure it out. And now I have fully working Spotmatic. Obviously it's, I need to put it back together and stuff, but I kind of started in on this guy first because I don't know that's just who I am but I definitely wanted to make a quick note to spotlight this and to say that if you or anyone you know has a Spotmatic that's not working definitely send me an email I would be more than happy to take a look at it and we can talk about whatever the issue might be from there but this is a little victory lap for me, so don't mind if I run it real quick. And thank you for tuning in. I know I've not been uploading regularly, but that's just because I've been kind of trying to work through some different stuff. I also have this completely dead AE-1 that I managed to resurrect. Lots of very fun, exciting things going on here. Working on some other projects, so I'll be sure to keep those rolling out but for now I'll probably put together a little Spotmatic work montage I'll put that as a separate video and if you have any questions you know you can email me and figure it out there also don't forget check out the Instagram page I will be putting up a store through that more than just my website for a store and hopefully I can get some of these cameras off my hands because I have a lot of cameras and this guy will probably be going up for sale when I get it put back together. I think that will do it for today. Yeah, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this with your friends, um, especially your friends that have Spotmatics that need to be repaired because I would love to work on them. I think they're great cameras, and outside of that one shortcoming of the light meter not working, like there's no reason that they shouldn't be as popular as a K1000 or as an AE-1. I'm looking forward to doing more of these, and thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.